welcome everyone. Another episode of Ask Mark Blue Glow Electronics. So today I'd like to ask everybody, go grab a drink, okay? Your drink of choice. Um, but let's sit back, sip on our drink, relax a little bit, and ponder some, uh, some pretty deep thoughts here, okay? All right, in chapter one of this journey, um, I want to explore a phenomenon I've observed over probably the last 10 years, maybe maybe a little longer. And it's it's got to do with the, I would call the next generation um, that is growing up right now, that is graduating college, that's hitting the working street. And that is that their epitome of hi-fi looks like this, okay? It's as simple as a set of Apple ear pods. Um, I've got three children. I call them children. They're 21 years old, 23 years old, 25 years old. Okay, so they're all out on their own starting their careers. You know, and I had this envisionment of, like my son, I moved him into a nice apartment in New York City um, two years ago. I had this vision that he would have this lofty New York City apartment working on Wall Street and in his apartment would be this incredibly amazing small stereo setup, right? Some kind of high-end receiver amplifier setup, probably a really nice set of bookshelf speakers. And this would be the, the mecca of his audio listening there in this, this small apartment in New York City. Two years in, this is his audio experience in New York City. There, there is no desire or passion for anything more than this. They're fine with getting their content streamed from Spotify or wherever. wherever. They're fine with the quality that these produce. And don't get me wrong, these are not bad. They're not bad at all. I use these all the time. I mostly use them for a phone device, uh, sync up with my iPhone so I can stay on conference calls and be mobile. But I also listen to music on them when I'm on an airplane or whatnot. I don't sit here in my house at night and say, wow, honey, let's listen to some music together while we, while we sit in here and talk and drop these into my ears. I don't. Um, so it's just two different worlds, and it, maybe it's two different generations. And I'm sure there's people my age that enjoy these as well. Um, so it's not, probably not just an age thing. But it's showing me that convenience and efficiency and simplification, the ability to carry these in your pocket, to take them on the go and have them wherever you're at, outweighs the value you get from a high-end audio system for many these days, okay? Kids, I grew up, right? I, I was born in the late 60s. I grew up in the 70s, all around hi-fi systems, right? And so I heard this really incredible music and then then, then, you know, I turned into a teenager, probably didn't care so much about it. I was more about fast cars and the stereo in my car than I was, you know, in my house or my, or my parents' bedroom or whatnot, you know. But as I've grown older, um, you know, now I've reinvested back into systems in my house. Well, my most kids probably will never have grown up and experienced that. They probably listen to cassettes part of their life and then CDs. Uh, on lo-fi systems, and now this is this is the epitome. So, at any rate, I think that's transpiring, and it you see it. You go into a Best Buy, a Target, a Walmart, wherever. Go back to where you used to see stereo systems, and what do you see? You see little boom boxes or little bitty boxes, Bluetooth enabled, um, that let them reproduce music through it. You know, you find these type of devices. You don't see stereo systems there anymore. So, at any rate, on to chapter two. All right, so recently I saw an article that was posted where Elon Musk at Tesla, had, they, had, they were out searching for recruits, basically engineers that had experience working with what they call wearables or devices that um, have Neuralink capabilities. In other words, devices that you might uh, either wear or get implanted um, that would somehow do a type of biolink into your brain and um, kind of surpass um, the normal senses. So <laughs> let's take a look at that. All right, here's an article from Technology Review from just a few weeks ago. 
Um, you know, it starts out and talks about Elon Musk, Neuralink, um, which is, uh, you know, all founded in the neuroscience space, but it's his, his technology and they've got an entire team dedicated to this. But it goes on to say, rock climb without fear, play a symphony in your head, see radar with superhuman vision, discover the nature of consciousness, cure blindness, paralysis, deafness, mental illness. These are just a few of the applications Elon Musk and employees at his four-year-old neuroscience company, Neuralink, believe the electronic brain-computer brain interfaces will one day bring about. It goes on to say some of those may never happen. It kind of equates this to kind of like a Fitbit in your skull with tiny wires. And it goes on to say, you know, how some of this likely will come to be, and some of this may not. Then it goes on to talk a little more about just how they're starting to do some of this testing in pigs and they've started implanting devices. You know, there's the whole health and safety aspect to that. And then does it actually work? And then if it does work, what can you do with it type thing? So pretty good articles out here on this topic right now. So then there was this tweet from Elon Musk. It started out by saying, if you solved hard problems with phones, wearables, Sealing, signal processing, inductive charging, power management, etc. Please consider working at engineering at neuralink.com. So basically post your resume here. We may be interested in you. But then this guy Austin went on to ask a question that said, if we implement Neuralink, can we listen to the music directly from our chips? Great feature. And Elon replies with, Yes, in great big bold words. So, if you think about that a little bit, you've got maybe a pretty close to perfect audio source, okay? Nice flat file. And you've got that implanted straight into your brain and you bypass the reproducing devices such as a stylus or a cassette head <laughs> or maybe a DAC and you replace the amplification, you replace the speaker wires, you replace the hum you may get from your power supplies, and then your speakers, hey, they're probably not all that efficient, not all that great, probably don't produce it identically to the original. And then you replace our ears that may be, may be aging. You know, I don't, I can't hear quite as the frequency spectrum I did when I was younger. So you replace all of that with a direct embed and you skip all the stuff in the middle. So you go great from pretty close to perfect audio file to your brain. And, and how does it deal with that? It makes you wonder whether maybe 20 years from now, maybe in my lifetime, that is the wave of the future. These are phased out. Some little implant under my hair here that no one can even see is streaming music from my phone. Um, straight into my brain and we're bypassing all of this other stuff. And maybe I can listen to a music and be on a conference call at the same time. Who knows? You know, it's, it's just um, makes you think about tomorrow and where things are headed. You know, there's a lot of, you know, I don't want to be tagged um, type thoughts to this. I'd, hey, if, if they can put stuff in, can they get stuff out? Then you get into the whole, who's really thinking? Was that my thought? Or was that Elon Musk's thought that I just had? Did I really like that song? Or did someone tell me to like that song? Maybe the advertisement did. I don't know. It's a slippery slope at some point, right? any rate, it's a lot to ponder. And going back around to what I said in the beginning, I'm going to need a lot more of these um, before I can get my head around where we may be 20 years from now. So I'm going to leave you with that. It was a food for thought conversation today might spark you to do some research into what all's going on out there. Um, until then, I'm going to go over here and drop the needle on, a turn t on my turntable onto some vinyl and crank up a tube amplifier and enjoy some really warm sounding music here in my house. Um, otherwise, I'll get paranoid about what may be replacing this in the future. So thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. Um, we'll keep making videos. Hope you guys enjoy them.